I ran more benchmark tests on the Lenovo Legion 5i than any other laptop ever on my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the thermals, component usage, video editing tests, design tests, noise, and more of the Lenovo Legion 5i. Let's get rocking! If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. You can also find timestamps in the description below for each section of this video. If you're curious about the exact specs or pricing of any of these models, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase through that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you're curious about how this laptop stacks up against its most common competitors, I've made dedicated head-to-head -head videos that you can check out in the YouTube cards above. As always, I want to start out with the build quality and usability of the Lenovo Legion 5i. But first, I want to tease out that this laptop with 8 gigs of RAM thoroughly surprised me with its abilities within the benchmarks. So hang on for just a few minutes and we will dive into all of the benchmark tests. The Lenovo Legion 5 is an all-plastic build that provides a wood grain-like texture to the touch of the top of the cover. The design aesthetic is discreet compared to most gaming laptops, which for creators, I think is a big bonus. There are two embellishments on the top cover, one badge toting the Lenovo branding and the other an iridescent inlay displaying the Legion branding. Overall, I really like the appearance. The only thing I don't like about the look from the outside is the ledge. It makes the machine appear bulky. I would rather see them push the screen over the ledge and convert the 16x9 panel to a 16x10. Perhaps in the future they will do this. The lid is a little snug, but I was still able to get a one-handed open. The hinge is smooth and feels durable, but the screen is a little bouncy for my taste. The screen is a 15.6 Full HD matte display with a moderate brightness at 315 nits and has a refresh rate of 60 Hz. With a mid-size bezel, it is pleasant to the eye, not too chunky. It comes with a 720p webcam and a mechanical sliding webcam blocker. So I guess you don't get spied on while you're dancing amok to Miley Cyrus partying in the USA. But in all seriousness, this is a great feature and I think we will see more companies following suit in the near future. I was really hopeful that this screen would redeem my hope for color accurate screens on gaming laptops on a budget, especially that the screen is only 60 hertz. They had plenty of opportunities to spend a little money to focus on color accuracy. Unfortunately, this screen only reaches a color gamut range of 62% sRGB, 46% Adobe RGB, and 46% DCI-P3. Note that these specs will be the same on the Ryzen model as well. If you're a designer, photographer, or video editor, don't let this scare you away. This is a great laptop, and once we look at the benchmarks, you will see that. If you are looking for color accuracy, I would suggest complementing this laptop with an external monitor, like Acer's 100% Adobe RGB Color Accurate Concept D CM2. I will link it down in the description below for you to check out. The dual screen setup will also give you more room to work on projects, which can improve your workflow. As we transition from the screen to the keyboard, I want to point out the pleasantries of the soft touch keyboard deck. My Dell XPS has the same feel and it's something I find very comfortable. Another benefit to this soft touch is that it does not have that cheap plastic feel. It feels good and sounds even better. The keyboard deck has a nice layout, I like the key press, it is quiet and smooth, firm and not too spongy. It is the perfect happy medium for me. Lenovo has placed a suitable trackpad on this gaming laptop. This is usually a big concern of mine because gamers usually don't use the trackpad, but designers and video editors will. They have done us a favor and included a solid trackpad with great click sensitivity and touch gestures. My hat is off to you on this one Lenovo. One neat feature I want to point out before moving on is the shortcut Lenovo built-in to control the fan speed. Quickly tap the function plus Q key to toggle between auto and quiet fan modes. Toggle through multiple RGB keyboard lighting modes by holding function and tapping the spacebar. This was a fun surprise and my favorite mode was the really subtle blue tan blue that looked very handsome beneath my fingers. And the last keyboard shortcut I want to mention is function plus F9. 
This drops you into Lenovo's Vantage, where you can toggle between different thermal modes, power modes, and adjust the RGB keyboard lighting. A nice touch for the non-techie creatives out there. All right, so now as we're pulling up the ports on the screen, I wanna point out that you need to consider your workflow. There's a lot of great ports on this laptop, but if this laptop port setup doesn't work for you, then in a sense, it is not the right port setup. The latest tech is great, but it's important to consider your workflow so you make sure you get the best ports for your needs. If you are someone that is on the go a lot, I would recommend keeping the charger with you. Web browsing battery life is pretty good at estimated five to six hours, but if you're a serious creator, then you are going to burn through the battery pretty quickly. With a full battery, I conducted some edits to a video and then set it to export. The battery lasted about one hour and 47 minutes. I was pushing this laptop pretty hard. So if you're a graphic designer, you may be able to get two and a half to three hours out of this battery, but I would not guarantee it. All right, now that we have worked through the build and usability, let's talk about the performance. The model I'm reviewing comes with the Intel 10th Gen Core i7-10750H. This is a six core, 12 thread processor. The NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti with six gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, eight gigs of DDR4 clocked at 2,933 megahertz in a single slot, which is upgradable to 16 gigs, according to Lenovo's website, and has a M.2 SSD of 512 gigs. Lenovo did a great job venting this laptop. There are a total of five vents, two side vents, two rear vents, and one large vent along the bottom of the laptop. Taking a look at Geekbench, you can see that the CPU single core performance is pretty solid. It's not the best, but it's good, as well as the multi-core performance in Geekbench. Cinebench R20 came in pretty moderate as well at 3,188 points on the score. Blender Classroom, if you are into 3D modeling, the GPU took about five minutes and 32 seconds, and the CPU took about 13 minutes and 50 seconds. Again, I'm trying to get more of those 3D modeling benchmarks out there for y'all. Photoshop is the most intensive program for designers. So I use Puget Systems Photoshop benchmarking tool to gauge how well the laptop will handle graphic design, photography, and artist workflows. It performs well in all categories, but I will say it is substantially lower than I expected. By observing the component usage, you can see that it is using up almost every bit of RAM during the benchmark tests. If you are going to buy this laptop for Photoshop, I would recommend upgrading the RAM to 16 gigs. If that puts it out of your price range, then I would go for the Intel Core i5 version with 16 gigs of RAM. That should even out the price for you. I will link the i5 version in the description below as well. There you can check out the pricing. The Puget Photoshop score is a 539, which I said is a little low for this laptop considering the performance. So with that 16 gig upgrade, I think you'll be on track. Now I tried to run this laptop through After Effects benchmarking. Uh, I was unable to run it though because you need 12 gigs to run the entire After Effects benchmarking suite. However, I was able to run the Puget After Effects render test and that got a score of 430, which is a good bit lower than the Asus Tough A15. Now, like I said, if you up that RAM, we should be able to get some great scores because this laptop does have a solid GPU and a solid CPU. I think we are just struggling with that RAM. Now, I would have upgraded this computer to 16 gigs of RAM here in the studio, but according to the reviewer contract, I'm not allowed to switch out any components. So just keep that in mind. Now onto video editing. For this test, I took a nine minute 4K clip, placed it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, then exported it out of both programs at 4K YouTube settings and 1080p YouTube settings. Premiere Pro 4K export to 4K was able to do this in five minutes and 13 seconds. That is the fastest export out of Premiere Pro that I've personally seen on my channel, beating out the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Now, if you wanna go export out to 1080p to save a little bit of time, you actually won't save that much time. It did this export in four minutes and 40 seconds. Now, Premiere Pro 4K export to 4K only on the battery, so you know, unplugging the computer and having just on battery power, exports it out at seven minutes and 49 seconds. But the really neat thing about this is it pulls down the decibels of the fan, so the fan doesn't run as loud, to 40 decibels. So it's actually very quiet. We'll talk about how loud it was on the 4K to 4K export later in the video. DaVinci Resolve, however, was rather slow. The 4K to 4K export took 11 minutes and seven seconds, and the DaVinci Resolve 4K export to 1080p took four minutes and 21 seconds. I also ran a rendering test in Premiere Pro, rendering out 7,240 frames, and this took five minutes and two seconds. 
For the longest time, I have said that you should get a laptop with 16 gigs of RAM. And I will stand by that statement because although this laptop exported the 4K clip out of Premiere Pro faster than any other laptop on my channel before, you will notice that it was using up almost all of the RAM to do so. Meaning that if you want to do any multitasking, it would substantially slow down your computer to do so. Next, we're going to talk about thermals, noise, and component usage. So keep hanging on to this video as I know you guys are looking forward to these tests. The Lenovo Legion 5i CPU idles at around 33 degrees Celsius. During the Premiere Pro 4K export, it spiked up to about 82 degrees Celsius, but then it stabilized at around 65 degrees Celsius. The Premiere Pro 4K export took the GPU to about 66 degrees Celsius. Now, DaVinci Resolve 4K export was a little bit hotter, and the 4K export spiked up to about 90 degrees Celsius, and then stabilized at about 72 degrees Celsius. The DaVinci Resolve 4K export took the GPU to about 65 degrees Celsius. During the Photoshop Puget benchmark test, the CPU got up to about 52 degrees Celsius and stabilized around that point. During the Puget Systems benchmarks, the GPU was at 43 degrees Celsius because we're not seeing much GPU usage at all in that test. Now the Legion 5i noise test at idle sat around 30 to 35 decibels. So basically no fan and occasional fan kicking on, but very lightly. Photoshop benchmarks, took the fan up to about 35 to 42 decibels, and the Premiere Pro export took the fan up to 40 decibels on only battery power, remember that seven minute and 49 second export, and plugged into power, it took the 4K export up to about 52 decibels, so a little bit noisier, but if you keep it unplugged or push quiet mode, you can pull the laptop down to about 40 decibels, which is really quiet. During the Premiere Pro render test, it took the laptop up to about 52 decibels, and DaVinci Resolve 4K export was 51 decibels. All right, now let's talk about the component usage. This was very interesting to me because it was able to show us how much of this laptop was being used during the exports or to benchmark tests. The component usage during the Photoshop Puget Systems benchmarks test had the CPU at around 27%. The GPU got up to around 15%, but mainly sat around the 5% range, and the RAM was at 96% usage. Like I said, increasing that RAM to 16 gigs will help you get even better performance out of Photoshop. Premiere Pro 4K export took the CPU up to 35%, the GPU up to 52%, and the RAM up to 85% and a little bit beyond occasionally. So again, having a little bit extra RAM will help with multitasking. DaVinci Resolve had the 4K export with the CPU up to 98%, the GPU at 30%, and the RAM at 95%. So really heavy usage inside of DaVinci Resolve. If you're looking for a laptop that has great thermal performance, lightning fast export times out of Premiere Pro, and great benchmarks, even at eight gigs of RAM, then the Lenovo Legion 5i is a great laptop pick. Complement this laptop with a color accurate monitor and you have a solid video editing, photography, or graphic design setup. If you're curious about more in-depth specs or pricing of this model, you can head down into the description below and click that link. Now, if you do use that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But as always, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. As always, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I will see you here in the next video.